Welcome to today's conversation of shit and stick. So what shit and, shit and sticks conversation is about, let me get my pad, pad of paper, it is pretty much about how these kids or people in general don't want to actually do work associated to a talent. So example of the 80s was the Bengals. I think it was the Bengals. No, it wasn't the Bengals. It was the one of those girl bands and they didn't know how to play the, their instruments. And so they got on stage and they pretended to play their instruments. Maybe it was the Bengals, who knows? And eventually they were like, well shit, if we're gonna be doing this, we better fucking learn how to play these instruments. And they still didn't play them very well. And they likely just probably used other musicians while they half asked it on stage. And then use their provocative nature of women to show you their titties and their buttholes and then act as if that was the new norm for women to behave. So in a normal person's mind, that would not, that doesn't let it lead people to a fulfilling life. But that's what greed and gluttony and lust behavior demonstrates to society. So you're not a good actor, Sydney Sweeney, but you got boobs. You're not attractive, but you got blonde hair. And you're willing to spread your legs for euphoria. So you know what? We're going to give you a role in this movie or in this television show. Then we're going to say as an audience, we're going to say, we don't like her. We don't, we don't like her. We don't like her. We don't like them. We don't like these people. And so what do they do? They go into offense and then they go on Jimmy Kimmel where Jimmy Kimmel praises her and their co-stars praise them. And then this person over here praises Sydney Sweeney. And then the dude tells everybody what a great actor she is and how wonderful she is to work with. But the truth is, is she's not a good person at all. She's horrific. She's terrible to look at. She's terrible to be around. Her comedy skills are not good. She's not good at anything she does. But she's got big boobies. And industry wants her because she's willing to spread her legs and do what they tell her to do. And so we as an audience don't really have a choice. If we like her or not, we're going to be forced to see her on Netflix. And so you either conform or you complain. And then everything's a vicious circle of every actress is participating in the same behavior and they have no talent. They have no personality. They're not nice people. They're not fun to talk to. And then these women with no confidence and were literally given a free handout because they have big boobs or a connection, you know, like a connection in the business. She probably showed her boobs to the director is probably what happened. Um, what she does then is she abuses all women, everyone. And it looks like positive expression of I like or I'm a victim. So it's the victimization of herself. It's always speaking in jest and positivity, surrounding herself with people she doesn't like, and then they all together smile like Hollywood, and then look and occur as if she's confident, act as if she's living the high life when she's literally dying inside. Um, all the things that you would think a Hollywood celebrity, like the money, showing off the money with the clothes and the supplies, thinking things of manifestation, and then spewing that out in mass quantities through viral pieces of content. While the euphoria is garbage to bring value to devil levels. That's everything, every, every female out there, you're literally watching it with Taylor Swift at this time. She should have been a Debbie Gibson and a Tiffany. However, because she's such a B-I-T-C-H and because of, what's your name? Because of Scooter Braun, she took her career way too far. See, Debbie Gibson... Debbie Gibson and Tiffany are a Taylor Swift. They don't, they don't sing very good. They're teeny, they were teeny boppers. 
And there is no merit in this game of influence. There's no merit in the game of music. There's no merit in the game of actressing. There's only connections, looks, and how low can you go? And how much abuse and control can you put on an audience? And then there is no story. There's no story attached to any movie out there. It's all about the female the female in the movie and how she's insecure. So for example, Brooke Shields is in a movie with, I can't remember what your name is, but you were in the movie with um, the beauty pageant movie. Anyway, in that movie, Brooke Shields character and dude in the movie uh, were boyfriend and girlfriend in college and the daughter and the son are getting married at some weird resort wedding, which becomes the new norm for weddings is a, is a, a destination wedding because it's, it's more elaborate and you can be more, you can teach people to be more, more slave-like. Anyway, in the movie, she is being asked out by a young dude who was in the movie with, he was either in One Tree Hill or he was in the movie with um, A Walk to Remember. I always forget. I get those two mixed up for some reason. It's probably part of the game. It doesn't matter. They were both equally liked by audiences. I mean, one of them was probably dated Sophia Bush, as a matter of fact. Anywho, uh, she's psycho. Anywho, where was I? So he is like my age. So I'm 40 and Brooke Shields is like 65. And she's so entitled. She's disgusting. She went, a whole, went through this whole thing with um, Tom Cruise of... Him telling her not to take the medicine that her, they were making her a victim. And he was trying to stick up for her. But for the media, they wanted you as mothers to take medicine because they were trying to build up Big Pharma. And so Tom Cruise was one of those, is one of those guys who tries to fight the battle. And the Today Show, what was his name? It's not Al Roker, but he's involved. Matt Lauer said, why would you do that to her? Take a look at what the daughter's turned into and you'll know why that Tom Cruise did that. There's a whole long list of things of why they were doing that. Kanye West even tells you that the handlers give people medicine and drugs to get them to do shit that they want them to do. And they do it because they want money and fame. And so Brooke Shields was that victim and Tom Cruise tried to stick up for her. And then they tried to take away his career to the point where he went on another interview and they tried to annihilate him and he stood up for himself again. So if anyone out there doesn't like Tom Cruise, it's because he stands up for himself. And that's the brand and the image of the portrayal of what someone like Jimmy Kimmel would do to save his own ass. What do I mean by save his own ass? If he doesn't do, he likes doing this to people too, by the way. So this is not just about him being a victim. He's not the victim. He likes hurting these people. He's jealous of the way Tom Cruise looks. He's jealous of everything that Tom Cruise is able to do naturally. So Tom Cruise has always been the guy that we all were just kind of interested in because he has a lot to talk about. Although your talks around jets and, and airplanes are kind of boring. But what it does bring into the attention of people is that he has interest in a subject, which shows that he has actual passion for something. And that draws attention from particular tribes and communities. But that is not what people are interested. That's not what people are interested in, in the eyes of industry. Now they want to know who you're dating. They want to know who your legs are spread for. They want to know what gossip and drama they can fuel because they want to make things illogical to create gossip. And anybody who has a business knows that gossip is the destroyer of any business. People get fired. And this really happens in the industry also. We've seen it with, um, what's your name? John Travolta. 
We've seen it with John Travolta where he thought he was all badass and shit. And then they told us that he was gay. Out of the blue, he's been married for how many years? His first ex, or excuse me, his first, I think she was your wife, died of cancer. And then the ex-wife, or the dead wife, died of, also of cancer. Right? Or maybe it was Keanu Reeves, whose ex, who was pregnant, maybe, died in a car accident. They also kill people like Kanye West's mother in routine plastic surgery to handle the celebrity. So they hit you where it hurts. And they do it only if they think they're not going to get caught. So it's easier to do it in Hollywood than it is to do in a normal person's existence because there's a lot of non-Hollywood people who actually used to have ethics and morals, but all the people in Hollywood, none of those people have ethics or morals. So you can, you can off Kanye West's mom and then get away with it because the doctor's being paid, the police officers are being paid, the judicial system is Democrat. The lawyers are Democrat. It's like really a, a coup. Especially if they're trying to do a business venture where Kanye is necessary for the, the coup. So we've got Prince dead. We've got, these are real talent too, people, right? These are people who have actual talent. Whitney Houston, a, a huge talent. Um, George Michael, amazing talent. These are amazing, talented people. And they off to them because either they weren't willing to be handled any longer or they were gonna expose the secrets or some other reason that was detrimental to this industry of the devil worship team. There is no existence in life where you wanna live in euphoria, no fucking reason. No person on the planet who's a person, would ever want to live in a 99% of your time living in an orgasm. That's disgusting, Mona Van. That existence that Mona Van delivers on her content is absolutely fucking disgraceful. It's fucking horrible. It's a horrible existence. But see, if she doesn't have anybody telling her no, she gets whatever she wants in the form of worship, money, and whatever the Middle East offers. They love looking hot. But hot doesn't bring conversation or insight or interest or fun. They just pretend. So all of these people went around with viral pieces of content where they literally showed themselves with no shirt on and then shoot you and communism associated to the Democratic Party picked and chose who they wanted to go viral based on the lowest of the low. They lowered people's standard of existence and values to make more people behave badly tried to disintegrate real-time business professionals like Donald Trump and then went around saying joy and happiness. That's called brainwashing. So you're actually down here and you're living in joy and happiness, which isn't real. You're actually fucking miserable, but it's a smile and a, and a shit to see if it sticks to build income for a small group of people who helps absolutely no, no one. While joy and happiness actually sits a little bit here in the middle. And you get to be excited about going to your first day of school. Or excited that you made a 95 on an exam. And then you take it back down so you can do more work. Like study for a test or come up with a great idea, or meet a really cool guy at a coffee shop that you've never met and had such a great conversation with. You're like, wow, I've never met a guy like that before. That's not a real story, by the way. That's a fake story. Um, and then you get to actually have a real nose in your life where you're like, well, shit, that didn't work out so well. But then you get to learn how to deal with your own emotions. See, you go to Primrose on YouTube commercials and they're teaching kids how to be friends. 
You don't talk to people and tell them how to be friends. Um, you watch them and then if they're misbehaving, you say, Rustin, why are you being mean to Phoenix? He won't share his tractor. Obviously, that's we're just using you two as an example because they would, they're, they're very good at sharing. However, they're really also good at being the examples of sharing to be friends. They're like brother friends. Looks like we had a little instance. And that's how Phoenix and Rustin learn how to be friends by learning within a moment in time versus me sitting there saying, so when you were with someone and they're a boy or you're a boy and they're a girl and you're a girl, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna be kind. That's fucked up. Yet that's what all influencers are teaching at this time. That's some sick ass fucking shit. That is literally how the Middle East is covering up who they actually are, Mona Band. Although it's pretty fucking clear with those pale ass legs and those uh, flabby inner thighs and that weird ass face that you now have with all that plastic surgery that you're fucking mentally ill. So they want to sit in front of your fucking face, lie up their fucking asses, get, you get no fucking results from any, anything these fuckers say. You get more abuse from people who are literally saying the same shit. They're just diminishing the light of every person on the planet. People are not able to live in reality. And then they tell people that they're empaths, but they only want to live an empath if it's joy and happiness. I ain't no fucking empath. You can keep that shit to your fucking self. See, people take pride in the fact that they can read people's emotions and then use it as a weapon against them. Little girl at the coffee shop. That same little girl who thinks she's so fucking friendly has nothing to fucking offer. Giggling at the table as she's at her, her morning date, what she met on Tinder, where he's literally bored out of her mind because she decided to live in euphoria. And he decided to just take her out because she looks hot. And now they're having SEX. And then all of a sudden, now she has a ring on her finger. And then now they have a kid. And he's looking for an entrepreneur. And now she's an influencer using the kid as money. And that's literally the vicious circle of what euphoria looks like. Yet, as you know, there's no substance there. She's actually sucking the life out of him because she's a fucking energy vampire. That's an empath. The creation of the modern day empath is a bitch standing behind a coffee counter who obviously is not an empath because I'm in a fucking pissy mood and you're going to say, have a nice day. And then you're going to tell me not to judge people. And then you're going to say, wow, what hurt, what hurt, bitch. I would never say something like that. Oh, Yeah. Did you say it in your fucking head? Then you fucking said it, bitch. L uh, proving to you they have no self-expression. Let's see how we can grow on platform, she says. Let me see how I can hide my fucking real emotions. Teach fucking absolutely nothing. Because if I actually show you who I actually am, I'll have 10,000 followers instead of a million followers. Understand what I just fucking said, bitch. So you can't get your head wrapped around that you need a million people to tell you how fucking big your titties are. You need a million people to 435 like your video so that you can make confidence occur in your lifetime, Gary V. While you then go on platform and promote provocative women who moan, oh, 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 wow. That's called the KKK. So what we're living in is nothing more than people who do not want to actually put effort into anything and call it euphoria. Rob the souls of reality. They don't want to mow their grass. They don't want to cook dinner. They don't want to take care of their kids. They want to squeal like pigs. Eee, oh no! gyrating the energy of everyone around them. And then they want to put sexual 
encounters on every vagina and dick they run into because they want to live in euphoria. And then you, as a person who doesn't want that, doesn't know how to control it by saying fucking no. And then they say, joy and happiness, be kind. That's how they get you to be vulnerable. Or they'll say, be the bigger person. Look at how high I am. Look at how much money I have. Look at me, I'm a mother of four. Look at me on another fucking vacation. Well, you can't go on a vacation. I'm such a nice person, aren't I? So this is the other part that really is fucking hilarious is that they cannot connect that they are not teaching or educating anything of value, but creating an essence of a brand as if they are brand value. So if I tell you, bitch, with the four sons, that I say, hell fucking no, I do not like you, you're not going to tell me that I like you. You're not going to tell me that you're safe to be around because I know that for a fucking fact that you are a fucking Mormon bitch. And I believe River might actually be in a Mormon household also. And everyone in the Mormon community are battling demons and living a demon-structured living. They don't believe in God. They believe in Mormon. They believe in perfection. They believe in bullying people into submission. They believe in coercion. They believe in lying to get what they want, which is a... a a further experience in American style of what Motivan offers. It's all that clean, clean living shit. Don't get your hands dirty. Don't work your ass off. Go abuse other people who don't believe in what you believe. You're always right. So while they act as if everything's so fucking great, they're not easy to talk to. They don't want to actually have real conversations, which is demonstrated all up in all of your businesses. And then they want to take to online accounts to tell you how to run a business. And then you want to ask yourself, well, who the fuck's actually running this business? It's like every video you fucking make is gimmicks and, and brand deals. I'm going to wear that horse hat, and then I'm going to look into the air and go, ah, ha, 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 wow, what great content. Gary V, your fiance is so wonderful. Shit and stick. Shit and stick. Oh, let me sit in the dark in this vampire, in this vampire bar all by myself with my photographer, and then drink this sugar drink. I feel drunk. Oh, wow. I think she was actually on a date with someone else. Uh, right in the middle of econ. So if you're having an affair on someone you're supposed to be engaged to, and he's hosting a huge event for people who drove all the way from Florida, and you purposely post a picture of yourself spreading your legs, um, putting your finger in your mouth. What do you think her message is to the audience as well as to the actual brand itself? Well, in your mind, you don't see anything wrong with that? And that's the fucking problem is that these women don't see anything wrong with that. And the problem is, is she then says how she's so moral and so ethical and she lives by this and that and this. Bitch, please. Every fucking piece of content you put out is nothing more than a dig at my fucking ass and I fucking kill your ass every time with the words that come out my mouth to expose your bitch ass. You're a fucking scumbag. And everybody fucking knows it, even you. But the, the ability for her to live in this ma ma manifestation shit that she learned from Joe Dispenza. 
She learned this shit from Joe Dispenza. She learned it from her Middle East culture, but she also learned it from a devil bitch named Ramtha, who Joe Dispenza, Dispenza teaches about. Although I'm kind of beating your ass, Ramtha. You're literally fucking losing. And she really is not very good at it, by the way. I think I'm going to meditate off of my video of Gary V's birthday montage. Who the fuck out there wants to see Mona Van and Gary V again in another video montage of their fucking nasty ass travels together every fucking year to destroy people's lives? Gary V's all about it. He even posts the shit on his platform. That's called shit and stick. That's somebody who doesn't do any fucking effort or any fucking work except for fucking blow smoke up our fucking asses while he says, be kind. You as an audience are only toys to his tools of how he's going to build his brand and business. That's it. Then he occasionally puts somebody up that is uh, up and coming because he heard something or saw something and then he does a podcast with them, but they're fucking evil too. So no one's actually living ethics and morals while they all yell family first. And he says, Persian's my family. Okay, well get the fuck out of my fucking face and go be fucking Persian and go wave your white towel in the fucking air. You stupid fuck. Dumbass. Fucking nasty ass shit. Smell your fingers, Gary. Fucking whack job. Go hang out with your bro-in-law, your nephew who's fucking Persian, you fuck. That's the reality of who you actually are. You're nothing but a fucking scumbag. You're a fucking snake oil salesman. And every fucking day I fucking prove it to your fucking ass about how you fucking violated the American people so that you could use communism to override American culture while you promote the Democratic Party. So that life for you could be one big fucking party. Then you put the wool over everybody else's eyes. And say, be kind. So that you never have to take responsibility while telling other people to hold themselves accountable when they're only 15 years old. You literally have lost your fucking minds. Your perversion belongs in your fucking pants. Not on me, bitch. Your fucking shit is fucking nasty. The fact that you all want to live in seduction and sex for your entire existence says that you are up to absolutely fucking lutely nothing. You are up to, up to absolutely fucking lutely nothing if all day long, 24 hours a day, you rubbing your coochie and feeling your JJ. And you say, what do you mean? Eh, 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 eh. You do know that you're nasty as fuck, Mona Van, right? I mean, literally, all you have to do is look at that one video to see, and all the shit in the beginning that Gary Vee was promoting with that bitch to see who he actually is and see what he was loving. He was loving that fucking shit. You were loving that shit, Gary Vee. You were like rubbing your shit and holding her hand and looking at her erotically with your eyes crossed. Oh. You thought that you were in fucking la-la land with that fucking whore. You thought that you were fucking hanging out with someone like me because she's trying to steal my personality? Oh, please. Really, because it sure as hell looked like you were so fucking in love when you were in Turkey and you were humping her. While you were holding her hand and her hands all over your legs and you're hanging out with her grandparents and you're hugging the grandparents. You do know how fucking sick you fucking are, right? See, they don't even comprehend how fucking sick this Mona Van bitch is. They say, well, she's family. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't give a shit. Anybody who treats somebody like that is going to fucking hell. But guess what, bitch? You fucking raised a fucking whore. Because I sure as fuck could have turned my back on all this fucking shit and made a shit ton of fucking money. But instead, my family raised me right. 
Yeah, really, Gary? Because your family doesn't look like they raised you, right? Because they all participating in it too. Go take a look at AJ Vaynerchuk and the dirt, the dirt shit, the dirt shit of the worst business that ever exists in Hollywood and industry, the sports industry. Go take a look at ballers because that's who AJ Vaynerchuk wants to be. You as the wife better go take a look at how many times Mona Van is hooked up with your husband. Better go take a look at how many times Mona Van has given AJ a BJ. Better go take a fucking look at what AJ Vaynerchuk is up to in corruption associated to your fucking business, which would be your arms and your legs. Because don't be fucking fooled by the fact that Gary Vee says he's a nice guy. Because I assure you, after all the shit that I've exposed on him, he ain't no fucking nice guy. He's a fucking dirtbag, just like that fucking fiance on his fucking arm. Just like the bitch that he used to be married to. Just like all the shit he's been involved in. You're nothing but a goddamn liar, Gary Vaynerchuk. And all you're trying to do is get the world into euphoria where everyone lives in joy and happiness. So that you don't have to do as much work and everybody just uh, smiles to each other's face in extreme delight. <laughs> While only you make t-shirts and bullshit and no one learns anything and then the world is destroyed. But guess what? At least you and your bitch ass Persian whore got to make a, a legacy of darkness on the planet. Because that's really what you're doing right now. Every piece of content you fucking produce is nothing but shit and stick. Your fucking wave of joy is fucking gone, bitch. Because I turned that fucking shit off. You ain't taken from me no more. You're going to get what you deserve. And it's called fucking karma. Because you think you're better than me? You think that that Monavan bitch is better than me? Well, you're going to get that Monavan bitch. She's going to make your fucking ass and your life a living fucking hell. And she's going to be in fucking hell too. So all of you at Team Gary Vee are going to live in fucking hell after all the shit that you put me through and after all the shit that you've done on this planet. You better fucking believe that you are going to go fucking down for what each and every one of you have fucking done to me. I fucking hate you. You are all fucking horrific. So you go live in your cloud fart of euphoria because I have evidence on every fucking video that I've ever fucking made on how fucking horrific you bitches actually are. Because you are nothing more than sadistic psychotics who teach absolutely nothing. And I think that people are getting fucking sick and tired of you. And that's for you, Kamala Harris, and your weird ass fucking face.